So who presents Iris today to be joined in marriage to Andre? You may be seated. So this is the day that we've all been waiting for, the day of Andre and Iris' wedding. So I just want to welcome all of you here today to Shiloh Church. Uh, this is a special day. My name is Jonathan Overall. I'm one of the pastors here at Shiloh, and I've known Andre and Iris for uh, a long time. And uh, more recently, in the last few years, I've gotten a chance to know Iris. And so it's an honor to be here today. It's an honor for all of you to be here today. 
And uh, today, Andre and Iris begin a lifelong partnership. They have recognized the sovereign hand of the Lord guiding them together. They are honored that you have chosen to be here today to witness the holy covenant that they are entering into before God and each other. I know it's their prayer and their desire that the Lord will help them create a truly irresistible, loving, lasting marriage bond that is built on a mutual appreciation and respect for one another. Andre and Iris are entering into a joint heir partnership. And I firmly believe that it is God who is forming this relationship here today, which is going to be a strong covenantal bond that nothing can break. I just wanna share just a few moments on family because family is the foundational institution of human society. It is composed of people related to one another by marriage, by blood, or adoption. And it was in the beginning of time that God created mankind. And he said during that time, let us make man in our image. I just wanna, for a moment, just highlight the word us. Because it was the unified Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who were active in the process of creation and creating that first family but also a model to us of the ultimate picture of unity, that family unity. So when God created mankind in his image, he placed within us the instinctual desire to be placed in the family unit. With the story of Adam and Eve, we see that God's original intent was modeled in the garden. Things didn't necessarily end well uh, for the original family, but because of the cross, because of Jesus, because he was resurrected from the dead, we have an open door of access to a path of restoration. Through Jesus Christ, God's plan for redemption is not only for the individual, but it's for the family. You will experience the intended blessing and covering that God intended for the family to experience. The healthy family is a place of love, a place of healing, a place of hope, and it is a refuge. Ultimately, it was created for the glory of God's unity to be revealed here on this earth through the bond which is created. Today, we are here to witness the formation of a new family between Andre, Iris, and Tavion, but it's also the joining of the Smith, the Watts, and the Phillips family. As they stay submitted to God and to one another, their marriage from this day forward is going to be sealed with the blessing and the favor of the Lord. Today, we are here to celebrate the love that Andre and Iris have for each other. The sacred institution of marriage created and ordained by God. We see from the very beginning that God prioritized and took this institution of marriage very seriously and the creation of the family. But in today's society, we do see an assault on God's original intent for marriage and the family. But through God's word, we see the blueprint and the guide for what marriage should look like. So holy is the marriage relationship that the apostle Paul likens it to the relationship between Christ and his church. A reflection of love that truly is kind, it's patient, it's committed, it's sacrificial, and it's triumphant. In the book of Genesis, we see again, Adam, a man who really had everything. He had a great job, had a great place to live, probably had beachside property on the Euphrates River. He even had his own farmer's market with every imaginable creation of organic fruits and vegetables. But even in that perfect place, he was missing something. And God knew it. It was in this place that God brought him exactly what he needed, a helpmate, a wife, unified together as one by the Spirit of God. Jesus, even in the book of Matthew, reflects on the story of Adam. When speaking about the unbreakable bond of marriage, he said, have you not read that he who, who created them from the beginning made them male and female? For this reason, 
a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Andre and Iris, today you are beginning your journey together and becoming one. With the help and the guidance and the power that can only come from God. As you walk out this daily, continue to allow God's word to be the blueprint of your marriage. Seek to understand God's word as you seek to understand each other in a deeper and a more intimate way. When God is a part of your marriage, your unbreakable marriage bond will be like a three-folded cord that is not easily broken. At this time, we're going to move into the exchanging of the vows. Andre and Iris, at the end of this ceremony, you will have committed yourself to each other by reciting your wedding vows. But you still must recommit yourselves to each other daily and make your marriage work. And for those of us who have already been joined together in the marriage holy bonds of matrimony, let us also here today renew and strengthen our commitment to our spouses as we attentively bear witness to the wedding vows of Andre and Iris. Now today, both Andre and Iris have chosen to put together personal vows that they're gonna share with each other. Andre Theodore Phillips. You are the one I waited for. You are my love divine. You're the one he kept for me until it was time. You're the greatest gift. It was no mistake that our paths crossed. May 26, 2015, that was our time. This very moment, standing here before you, moments away from becoming your wife, Iris Lynette Phillips, I muse upon who you are, a beautiful, gentle, caring soul. I see who you are, the real Andre. I love you. As your wife, I promise to forever be for you what you are for me. I promise to uplift you, to be your support and your rock, to empower and embolden you, to hold your hand as you shoot for the stars. You are my best friend. I promise to always be yours. As we pray together, laugh together, love together, and walk through life together, I promise to honor the man that you are. I promise to continuously grow so that I can be the wife to you and mother to Tavion that I am meant to be. He makes all things beautiful in his time. God has molded us and shaped us into who we are standing before one another, all in his time. You are a beautiful man, the one I prayed for. I love you so much, and I pray that our love continues to flourish for a lifetime. Only God knew when I met you, my whole life would change. Iris, you brought me love in my life when I've been through so much pain. I promise to build you up. I value our friendship and passion to never give up. I promise I will keep God first as our relationship grows. I will keep communication going like tide as the waves flow. Family at the forefront of our bond is the foundation. Jesus as the inspiration and Emmanuel for this celebration. In all we do, quote, be completely humble and gentle, be patient and bearing with one another in love 
end quote, says Ephesians 4, 2. I promise to always value your opinion as my partner in life because he who finds a good thing that has a wife. I've witnessed how you bonded with my son with natural ease. I promise to continue to be an amazing father with the future Phillips as they grow like trees. From Father's Day with the family celebration to you getting your master's degree, walking the stage at your graduation, or Sunday dinners at Franconia with full family participation, I've noticed his family is our theme for almost every situation. Love, God, family, but most importantly, love. I promise I will honor you like a gift from above, my best friend, my soulmate, and so much more. I promise to lead and learn like never before. The scripture says, lean not on your own understanding. To love you unconditionally is my goal, because this world can be demanding. For richer or for poor, when we agree or we, we're, on, we on, we're not on the same accord, our house will serve the Lord. As a team, we shall overcome any obstacles in store. I look forward to a happy life with a beautiful wife as my opportunity is knocking on the door. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So Andre Iris, in a moment here, I'm going to read through some additional vows, and at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to say, I will. 1 Corinthians says that love is patient and kind. It's never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and deliberately chooses not to keep score. It is never glad about injustices, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. Its faith, hope, and patience never fails. This kind of love always chooses to believe the best about the other person, and it assumes that his or her mate's motives and intentions are pure. It's the kind of love that pays attention to the little things and concentrates on those extra acts of thoughtfulness and sensitivity that binds people together. Andre, as you've already said, the Bible says that he who finds a good, finds a wife, finds a good thing, and he obtains favor from the Lord. This is both a reminder and a promise from the Lord of his blessings in your life. With that also comes a new set of responsibilities. Your primary focus is to be looking out for the best interest of Iris, daily covering her in prayer and showering her with kindness. God has chosen you to be a provider and a protective covering for your family. So this is the part where I'm going to ask you to say, or I will. Andre, will you affirm that you will take Iris to be your lifetime partner in marriage? Will you be sensitive to her and selfless and loving? Will you be wise and strong, yet careful and loving and protecting her from the pressures of life? Will you let your guidance come from God and his word and be responsible for her welfare, her growth and direction? Will you receive Iris as your God-given help me, a joint heir with you of the grace of God, a person of equal dignity because of her love and obedience to God. Will you love her, honor her, be faithful to her, stand by her through whatever may come? Will you make whatever adjustments are necessary so that you can genuinely and entirely share your life and yourself with her? I do. <laughs> Amen. Iris. Ephesians 5 says that the husbands are to love their wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself sacrificially. This is a love that nourishes and cherishes the wife, just as the Lord cares for his church. In return, 
the wife is to honor her husband. You are to concentrate on being an edification, conscious helpmate who becomes the joy and the fulfillment of your husband's life. Iris, will you affirm that you will take Andre to be your lifetime partner in marriage? Will you be sensitive to him and selfless in loving him? Will you be willing, willingly stand by him and give him your full support? Will you receive Andre as your God-given marriage partner for life and joint heir of the grace of God? Will you receive him from the direction, the strength, and the encouragement and the love that you need? Will you love him, honor him, and be faithful to him and stand by him through whatever may come? Will you make whatever adjustments are necessary so that you can genuinely and entirely share your life and yourself with him? I do. Amen. So at this time, we're going to exchange the rings. actually expecting a drone to come in and drop the rings out right here in the sanctuary today. Amen. Wedding in 2018. Amen. But the wedding ring is a symbol of unbroken unity. It represents a pure love that cannot be fragmented, as well as the marriage relationship, which is never to be severed. As Andre and Iris give these rings to each other, each ring will serve as a reminder of the perfect bond of love in Christ that joins them together in marriage, which like the ring should never be broken. Andre, please repeat after me. Iris, I give you this ring. Wear it with the joy, with joy as a symbol of our covenant. I chose you to become my lifetime partner this day and every day. My lifetime partner this day and every day. Andre, I give you this ring. Andre, I give you this ring. Wear it with joy as a symbol of our covenant. Wear it with joy as a symbol of our covenant. I choose you to be a lifetime partner this day and every day. I choose you to be a lifelong partner this day and every day. both of you, keep your voices tender and your words affectionate. Let Jesus Christ be honored in your home and in your lives. So today, as we move forward in this ceremony, Andre and Iris have chosen to take their communion together as a husband and a wife in your presence to acknowledge the importance of coming together as a couple to the Lord's table. In observing communion, we are remembering that Christ and all that he did and all that he's done for us in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we observe communion, we are also remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. His body was broken and his blood was shed for us so that we could be forgiven. So for those of you who Andre and Iris have asked to be a part of this communion, would you please come to the stage?
Tavion come to the stage? So marriage is the most sacred covenant that can be made between two people. It is a gift from God, the gift of abiding love and the devotion between a man and a woman. To celebrate the day of your marriage is to celebrate love itself. For rare is the joy of a perfect match. This afternoon, Andre and Iris have decided to symbolize their commitment to one another through a unity sand ceremony. Joining them in this part of the ceremony is Tavion, also representing the unity and the bond that they will share as a new family. In this unity sand ceremony, the three of you will create a lasting visual representation of the promises and the intentions for your marriage and for your family. Within a marriage, each person is both their own and each other's, two individuals choosing to create life with endless possibilities and dreams that theirs together, along with their children. The white sand represents God's strong foundation. Through this foundation, you are challenged to love, support, and nurture your marriage. As each of you pour, remember that containers represent you and the importance and the essence of all that you are and all that you bring to this union. May this marriage continue to be blessed with commitment. May this marriage continue to be blessed with strength. May this marriage continue to be blessed with patience. May this marriage continue to be blessed with understanding. And I know these two, let this marriage continue to be blessed with laughter. <laughs> May this marriage continue to be blessed with unity and all three together. And may this marriage continue to be blessed science project. What was once separate has now become one. This here vessel will serve as a reminder that nothing is more important nor more sacred than the bond that you share as husband and wife. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this symbol, Lord. We thank you for what it represents for Andre and for Iris and for Tavion coming together individually but becoming one becoming one family, becoming one marriage. Lord, so we bless, oh God, even the representation of unity. We bless the representation of love. We bless the representation of commitment and understanding and patience. We pray right now that you would seal even this moment. We pray that you would seal what this vessel represents as they put it in, on the shelf or the, 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 their, in, in their house, Lord, that every time that they look at it, that they would see and remember what you did here today. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to this ceremony, I wanted to be the first person to give you a gift as a married couple. And this gift is a Bible. It's for you three to share and to read the word together. This is the foundation. This is the rock of your family, of your relationship. As I spoke to you earlier, that God's word is the blueprint for the Bible or for marriage for raising a family, and it's the blueprint that's going to guide you through every season, through every good time, through every challenging time. It's going to be God's word that is going to bring you through. This is a 
I said earlier, this is the day that we've all been waiting for, but this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Andre and Iris, we have heard your promises today, and we recognize and we respect the covenant that you have made. In truth, however, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who is marrying you today. And it is before him that you will daily live your lives as husband and as wife. Today, before all of those who are present today, you have entered into a covenant relationship. And as a minister of our Lord, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Andre, you may kiss your bride. At this time, I have the pleasure to announce for the first time to you, Mr. and Mrs. Andre and Iris Phillips.